opportunity to speak to these guys and I just, uh, thank you for their attentiveness already. Uh, Father, may your words just penetrate uh, my heart. May it penetrate each heart that's here. And, uh, Father, may we take away something tonight that we can apply, that we can uh, use in our own lives that will be an encouragement to us and help us. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Judges chapter 11. Um, we're just going to start reading. I'm going to read for a little bit. You're going to see it on the screen. You have it in your hands. And then we're going to talk a little bit. And we're going to ask some questions. I want you guys to be thinking of, as we read this story, uh, ask yourself some questions, all right? And uh, all right, just, just the very first sentence. Now, Jephthah of Gilead was a great warrior. Think about that. Why did the Bible, why did the author think it was important to put he was a great warrior? Obviously it has some significance, right? We don't know what that is yet. But, uh, I think we're going to figure some of that out. But that's the kind of thing I want you to be thinking about as we read through this. Uh, there is hints along the way that tell us more about Jephthah. And uh, so next week, we're going to talk about him again. Uh, he, he did something uh, we'd probably call pretty stupid. Uh, he made a very tragic vow. And we're going to talk about that next week. But uh, uh, God used him in a very significant way, in such a significant way that he's actually mentioned in the New Testament as well. And we're going to talk about that a little bit next week. Also. All right, so obviously we're going to just start off here. He's pretty good at battle, right? He knows how to fight. 
that's that's all right. Yeah, we uh, we can. Uh, uh, We all understand that, and, and uh, we appreciate people who can, can battle well. He was the son of Gilead. Now, we don't know who Gilead is. It could be uh, they were uh, uh, called Gilead, Gileadites, or in, which could just refer to he was a man or son of a man who lived in Gilead. We don't know, but just it's a reference to a man in Gilead. We know that. All right, so he's the son of Gilead, but his mother was a prostitute. That's kind of interesting, right? Um, Gilead's uh, wife also had several sons, and when these half-sons grew up, they chased Jephthah off the land, and uh, they told him, you will not get any of the father's inheritance. Uh, they said, you are the son of a prostitute. All right. Can anybody relate to what's happening to Jephthah right now? That light, the sun is right in my eye. I can't, can't see you. <laughs> anybody relate to what's happening to Jephthah right now? He uh, wasn't part of the, the real family, right? His dad obviously had relations with, relationships with a prostitute, and uh, he was born from her, and uh, uh, what did the brothers do to him? They used what? Put him out of the house. Pardon? Put him out of the house. Put him out of the house. Okay, put him out of the house. Yeah, he was what? Picked on him. Pardon? Right, okay, maybe, yeah. He was rejected, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. All right. Can you, anybody here been rejected? Right. Tell me about your rejection. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a little bit about, about my rejection. This, this, this is pretty minor, okay, but I still remember, and it kind of hurt a little bit. Um, my dad remarried um, after my mom died, and my dad and I were really close. And when in my dad sold his house and he moved in to his new bride's house, and it just felt like it was a little estranged. And I didn't feel welcome there all the time. Uh, the, the, the mom's kids were always over there, and I just it felt awkward. And I, I had this sense that I just, I would, I would didn't belong there. Now that was probably just a feeling on my part, um, but I remember feeling that way. In that way, and I'm sure you guys got stories about that as well. Um, so tell me, tell me a time when you've been rejected or felt rejected.
How do you deal with that? That's good. That's healthy. How? I mean, and anybody else before I go on? Now, and that is probably more common than we would all think. That the rejection hurts so much that we cut ties or we do something. But here, Jephthah, not only was rejected, but he was kicked out, wasn't he? And um, so Jephthah fled. That's right there in verse 3. Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. And soon he had a band of worthless rebels following him. Ah, that's, let's think about this for a minute. He fled because, why? His brothers kicked him out and maybe he felt like he did. Pardon? He felt rejected, but he may even felt like he had fear for his life or something. I don't know. Uh, but he obviously took off. And um, he went and lived in this land. And like so many times when you're rejected, you, uh, you band together with people who what? Exactly, right. And so if you're in this miserable state of life, guess what happens? You kind of gravitate to people who are also in a very unhealthy state of life. And so here it says he had a band of worthless rebels following him. What do you think, what do you think about it when you hear this word, if they're following him? Okay, so what, all right, what are you thinking about that? How he was kind of a leader and he had all this. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, kind of kind of moves back to the great warrior thing, doesn't it? He he's not only a great warrior, but he is a, a person who can can lead and uh, can uh, help uh, or uh, band people together. All right. Now. Obviously, he's using his warrior skills to support himself, and uh, he's probably going out and looting. And, you know, I don't know what what all he's doing, but um, but uh, he uh, he's probably having to steal to live because he's been kicked out, and uh, so he now has a, a band of followers. All right, so down in verse 4. And about this time, the Ammonites began their war against Israel. When the Ammonites attacked, the elders of Gilead sent for Jephthah in the land of Tob. And the elders said, Come and be our commander. Help us fight the Ammonites. And Jephthah said, Aren't you the ones who hated me and drove me from my father's house? Why do you come to me now when you're in trouble? I'm going to put a couple maps up here on the on the screen. I just kind of want to show you in relationship to what's going on today or where we are today, what region we're talking about. It. I don't have a laser pointer, but you can see up where it says Jordan, all right, on the first map on the left side. That's just above what they call the sea, the Dead Sea. And just above that, see a little blue dot above it? That's the Sea of Galilee. Now, oh, thank you. Right in that area is Tob. All right, so that's kind of the area, and you can see it over here, up by Syria, on this side. This is kind of the modern day area of this, just kind of give you perspective of what we're looking at, of the area we're looking at. If you go to the next slide, I've got this slide on here again, but this is an Old Testament slide. Kind of gives you the areas uh, that we're talking about. Now we're going to, in this story, we're going to be talking about uh, this region from the Arma, Arman River 
up to um, that river up there, the Jabok River, and there's a region up that kind of goes from there to there all the way down the Jordan River. So that's kind of the area where that's being attacked by uh, the Ammonites, and uh, they're asking Jephthah to come and uh, protect them from these people who are trying to take over this region of land. All right, verse 8. And he says, why do you come to me now in your trouble? What's, what's the next several words? Because we need you. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, we don't get the big picture of the whole story of Jephthah, but he made enough, enough of an impression upon um, his people when he was home that they see that Jephthah is the man who can come and fight and lead them. So now what does that make you think about that little phrase up there, he was a great warrior? I mean, it kind of puts things in a little bit of perspective now, doesn't it? Uh, not only was he able to band together some people and, and lead some people uh, when he was exiled, but now they want him to come back and lead them to fight against the Ammonites. Because we need you, the elders replied, if you lead us into battle against the Ammonites, we will make you ruler over all the people of Gilead. Wow. Um, what do you think went through Jephthah's mind about right now? Yeah, that's great, man. That's awesome. I mean, if it was me, I'd be kind of, kind of blindsided, like, wow, I didn't see that coming. Um, what's that? Yeah, exactly right. Um, and that is probably pretty common of most of us. And that, that's a good, good statement to make right now because we see that Jephthah does it. And uh, Jephthah uses his, um, his leadership ability and skills to, to truly lead and, and not for himself. Um, so, Jephthah said to the elders, let me get this straight. If I come with you and the Lord gives me victory over the Ammonites, will you really make me ruler over all the people? And the elders said, the Lord is our witness. We promise to do whatever you say. So Jephthah went with the elders to Gilead, and the people made him their ruler and commander of the army at Mizpah in the presence of the Lord Jephthah repeated what he had said to the leaders. Go back to that last slide with the map, and there's a, you can see. You see it? It's right above, up in there, on this top. That's where all of this is taking place right now. And uh, that's where the, he is with the elders. And that's where he comes their ruler. Then Jephthah sent messengers to King Ammon, asking, Why have you come out to fight against my land? And the king of Ammon answered Jephthah's messengers, When the Israelites come out of Egypt, they stole my land from Arnon River to Jabak River and all the way to the Jordan. Like I've shown you early on that map, that big region there, from the river in the south to the river up the north, all along the Jordan River, that whole big region. Now then, give me back the land peacefully. And then uh, Jespa sent back his message back to the king of uh, the, the Ammonite king. Now, let's think about Jespa a minute. I mean, here he was, rejected, thrown out, 
living like a thief, um, beating other thieves, and uh, had friends that were not good friends. And now all of a sudden, he is acting like a real leader, acting like uh, someone who um, uh, who wants to do what's right. Now, go back to what we were talking about earlier. If all this stuff had happened to you, what do you think some of your thoughts and actions would be about right now? I mean, I, I kind of agree um, with uh, the comment that uh, I see what's in it for me. <laughs> what about you guys? Somebody else. What about you, Trent? Here you got kicked out of your house, you got kicked out by your brothers. Now that your your country wants you back to lead them. And uh, I'll say no. You say no, yeah, okay. I'll say no because me to come back, I'll say no, because you're the one that kicked me out, and if I come back, I'm going to try to do the same thing, and it ain't worth it. I think I'd probably go into the negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and we don't see that from Jeff Bath. Jeff Bath. Uh, we see that Here in verse 15, this is what Jephthah says. And he goes in a very articulate uh, way of defending Israel. And he says, Israel did not steal any land from Moab or Ammon. When the people of Israel arrived at Kadesh on the journey from Egypt after crossing the Red Sea, they sent messengers to the king of Edom, asking for permission to pass through this land. But the request was denied. Then they asked the king of Moab for similar permission, but he wouldn't let them pass through either. So the people of Israel stayed in Kadesh. Finally, he went through, they, they went through Edom and Moab through the wilderness. They traveled along Moab's eastern border and camped on the other side of the Arnon River. But they never once crossed the Arnon River into Moab, for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Then Israel sent messengers to King Simon, Simon of the Amorites, who ruled from Heshman, asking for permission to cross through his land to get to the destination. But King Sion didn't trust Israel to pass through the land. Instead, he mobilized his army at Jahaz and attacked them. But the Lord, the God of Israel, gave his people victory over Sion. So Israel, Israel took all took control of all the land of the Amorites who lived in that region. From the Arnon River to the Jebek River, from the eastern wilderness to the Jordan. Um, who is Japheth giving uh, praise or glory to the victory of the feet of acquisition of this land. Did he talk about some mighty warrior? No, he didn't. Who did he, who did he 
acknowledge here. Verse 21, but the Lord, the God of Israel, gave his people victory over King Son. Right. And so what does that tell you about Jephthah? Jephthah. Yeah, we don't know <clears throat> when he was kicked out. I mean, people can get kicked out for the wrong reason, right? So, and obviously he did get kicked out for the wrong reason. So, but we don't know where Jephthah was in his relationship with God during all that time. But we do know now that Jephthah has a faith in God, and he gave God the uh, acknowledgement and glory for uh, bringing Israel to the place that they are right now. And from in verse 22, from the Arnon River to the Japak River to the eastern wilderness of Jordan. So you see, it was the Lord, the God of Israel, who took away the land of the Amorites and gave it to Israel. Why then should we give it back to you? You keep whatever God Kamosh gives you, and we will keep whatever the Lord our God gives us. Are you any better than Balak, the son of Zippor, or the king of Moab? Uh, did he try to make a case against Israel for disputing land? Did he go to war against us? Israel has been living here for 300 years, inhabiting Eshbon and its surrounding settlements, all the way to our city and its settlements and in all the towns across the Arnon River. Why have you made no effort to recover before now? Therefore, I have not sinned against you. Rather, you have wronged me by attacking me. Let the Lord, who is judge, decide today which is right, Israel or Ammon. But the king of Ammon did not pay attention to Jephthah's message. Okay, we're going to stop the story right there. But uh, obviously, we've learned a lot about Jephthah right now, just in this short uh, uh, passage. Somebody just give me a, a quick summary of some of the things that they, they we believe is talking about Jephthah. All right. They have to win him on his own house to him to come back. Yep. yep. Somebody else? Yep. You know, I know none of you have been treated like Jephthah at the time. Pretty certain. You've not been kicked out of your country or have been forced to be homeless or you know, and he was pretty much kicked out and homeless, being fit for himself. Um, but it's pretty obvious that if God can Use Jephthah in this situation. God can take your difficult situations and use them as well. And I think that's that's a lesson that we can all relate to. Um, you guys have faced some difficult things in your short lives. I've faced some difficult things in my short lives. Still short. Um, one of the probably the most difficult thing that I've had to face about two years ago, I was working for a company and been there for 29 years and was fired for something I didn't do. And I'll have to 
tell you that I, I still fight anger and frustration over that. Because I love my job. It was a hard job. But I love doing it. And I, to this day, would still like to be doing it. But God has used that event in my life to draw me closer to himself. I'm more reliant upon him and not myself. Uh, I was many times uh, felt pretty self-reliant. Uh, I called the shots in my life. Um, I made things happen. And uh, God took that away from me. So, God is continually teaching me to be reliant on Him. And one thing that we see here in Jeff's life is no matter what the situation is, we must remain faithful. You're going to go through seasons of times when you're not going to be as faithful. Must remain faithful. You want God to work in your life through difficult things? Remain faithful. I'm going to close in prayer and then Ryan's going to come up and lead us in a closing song. Uh, thank you for Jeff's story that you've given to us here. Pray, Father, that you will uh, use it not only in these guys' life, but my life. Help us to learn more about yourself.